everybody, welcome to our first bonus episode of Beyond the Gate, Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood podcast. I'm Megan. And I'm Meg. And today our bonus episode is focused on the new intro and outro for part two of Brotherhood. There, It's technically not divided into seasons like most anime, so we're just going to say part two because we don't know what else to, to call it. But we wanted to kind of discuss these new songs we are we we're introduced to and the awesome imagery that accompanies them. Mm-hmm. Yep. And we didn't want to put it into a normal episode because otherwise it will be very long. So forever in a day. Yes. Let's get right into it. So the intro is called Hologram by Nico Touches the Wall, which they do many intros and outros for for other shows like Haikyuu and uh I think you said My Hero I think I think uh, they did one of the My Hero yeah yeah so it's kind of sad but usually like at least for this for this group I recognize them when I hear them in an intro now um Sa- same with me for burnout syndrome <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah them too um and then the outro is by is called let it out and it's by miho fukuhara which i think that's how you say it yeah so we're just gonna go without uh without going a play-by-play for for the intro and outro because you can just watch those we'll hopefully have links um available or or i'll just put it on our our youtube mm-hmm. playlist yeah just put it um, on YouTube. yeah but we each channel. we each chose our favorite lines um, from the intro and from the outro. So my favorite line from Hologram, and this is this is Amelie's translation again, was, when I was a child, I never stood still, always finding adventure on those hills. Um, I chose that one because it's just, it's it's got the energy of childhood. You know, you're always on to something new. Um, I feel like I was fairly adventurous as a child. But I do err on the side of caution at times, too. But as I've gotten older, I just want to take more risks. So it might not just be a thing for for kids to mm-hmm. to be energetic like that. Yeah, and my favorite line, I had a really hard time picking a favorite line because pretty much the whole song. But um, the one that I picked was, and it's like a watercolor dream with every hue showing me the beauty that I was too blind to see. I I picked this because I think it's, it's talking about the future and how it can be better than we ever imagined it. But yeah, <laughs> different but better. Yeah. Uh, and then the outro, Let It Out. Uh, my favorite line from that was, never feel you need to act brave when you're hurt. And I think the whole point of the song is um, when they say let it out, let out your emotions, whether that be through crying or just saying what you're feeling. Uh, and crying is something that I try not to do too often, not in an unhealthy way, but just, just as like a way to, to not be that person who's like blubbering and, and, um, I'm always afraid if I'm annoying people. So Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. But I, I I do make sure I cry when appropriate (laughs) so I can get my feelings out. (laughs) The same. I, I am also not a crier and I also like, I don't, I wouldn't say I'm an ugly crier, but (laughs) I, um, I get like these really terrible, like red splotches all over my face. And Mm. so it's just, I hate crying in front of other people because it's so obvious that I was oh. crying. And so I just avoid it at all costs. Yeah. I And the, the um, never feel you need to act brave when you're hurt line, I think, gets to me because I'm I kind of have a stone face, even if I'm feeling a lot of stuff. <laughs> so <laughs> I want to get better at actually showing my emotions play out on my face so people can come and comfort me when I need it. And I'm not just sitting there hoping that they'll guess what I'm feeling. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Cause I'm always, I know I, I'm always annoyed when people do that. Just like, say what's, what's going on. And then like, I do the same thing. <laughs> like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Um, it's hard to put it into words sometimes though. Yeah. 
Well, because if you do, then you're going to Then you start crying. (laughs) Yeah, (laughs) exactly. And then my my favorite line is kind of long, but um, no one really knows for certain what day fate will pull pull the curtain. So all the all this time I've held a knife behind my back in case my luck wears thin. And I think I I like this line a lot because I (laughs) relate to it. Like I always I feel like I always have a layer of protection. Always always making sure like not not to not to say too much or if I do say something have like backup plan for like oh just kidding or you know Mm. like that's not really what I meant or or just like I don't know always having my guard up I guess or the to borrow a spider-man phrase expect disappointment and you'll never be disappointed yes yeah probably not the best thing to do but it's fine (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> i just bottle this up it won't it won't explode later right? <laughs> right yeah well yeah i think both of those lines are very important i think it, it shows progress in moving forward um physically and emotionally which is why i really like that song whenever it comes on in my playlist with with amelie's voice singing it i always mm-hmm. i always have to sing the never feel you need to act brave when you're hurt part and see i always sing i always sing this mm-hmm my line (laughs) and sometimes it's a song i'll just hum to myself just Mm. randomly throughout the day yeah it's a good it's a good uh song to have stuck in your head yeah it's also one of the slower ones at at Mm -hmm. times it does speed up later but you know some of her songs since it's translated when it speeds up it's like impossible to follow along with the words yeah but this This one it's not it's not like rap level speed it's it's like you can actually learn the lyrics and learn the tune and sing it to yourself pretty easily Mm -hmm. yeah yeah okay Mm -hmm. moving on to the imagery for the intros and outros so um for this intro we get black and white imagery first and then it switches to colored images later on uh and we get a really cool a shot of Al's perspective. The camera zooms in to his face, goes inside his helmet, turns around. Mm -hmm. You're able to see his blood seal, and then it comes right back out. And that's when things uh, turn to color, actually, is when it comes back out. Um, And, of course, we've got some awesome battles with the homunculi happening in there. And we're showing off the new characters, like Ling and Mei, and their fighting skills. And all of Mustang's gang is there. They're all framed in the same shot, which is incredible. (laughs) Um, There's also a shot of Ed standing in front of his dad, staring him down. And then the intro ends with Ed and Al walking on these railroad tracks. And I I thought that was really cool because reading the manga, I feel like there's always some sort of travel imagery in in you know, the the images that open mm-hmm. the chapter right before yeah. you turn the page. Yep. I feel like they're always walking somewhere and Ed's got his his suitcase with him. Yeah. Always on the move. Yep. They're, they're on a you mission. Never stood still. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I uh, love yeah. I, I was just gonna say I love I love the intro. It gets me very like It's a I, hype song. I'm like yeah, and I'm like like seeing all the fighting. Like I'm like, I'm so excited for Ling's sword work, oh. even though it's even though it's like low quality images since he's so far away, he's just mm-hmm. like flipping around using his sword. It's so dynamic and and fluid, and it makes me go, "I use your sword, Ling, please." We just met you, mm-hmm. and you don't. Use, we know you have a sword because it's it's on his. It's like wrapped up. It's not a sheath, but it's hooked to his belt. Mm-hmm. I just want to see him use it, which I know we will see. Uh, yes. And moving on to the imagery from the outro, so there's rolling scenery. It's it's not really a action packed outro, so it, it mm-hmm. there's quite a few, quite a few seconds of just this the rolling hills moving by, and you see shots of all of the characters in succession with them just like standing and their hair blowing dramatically in the wind, which is kind of a small flex on the animators' part, making their hair look so good. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> But later, near the end of the outro, there's a lot of cute scenes with with Ed and Al growing up. And you see, like, little photographs of them throughout the years. And uh, the the outro ends with Ed and Al walking away from the camera. And it's sunset. 
And then the the very last uh, still image is it's nighttime and you just see um, a house with the windows lit up. I'm pretty sure that's the Rock Bell's house because Ed and Al's house is no more. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I think we saw that in the also in the outro. Wasn't that one of the first images? The Rock Bell house? No, no, no their house burnt down. <laughs> their house. Oh, right, right. Yeah. The anyway, there's like cinders on the ground and stuff. But, yeah. Uh, I like yeah. my my favorite part of that of the outro is like all the pictures of yeah. them as little kids are so cute. <laughs> I'm kind of disappointed because I compared those little photographs with the ones that are shown in the manga, and there's one of Ed when he was you know really young, and he had I think it was just after he lost his arm and leg, so I think he's got a prosthetic leg on, not an auto male one, but like a basic prosthetic, mm-hmm. and Den is by him and he's eating something, and the fork is sticking out of his mouth. And he doesn't have his right arm. So he's just sitting there. And in the anime, it's just little Ed, you know, looking like he he did even when he and Al were on the island, like that that version of Ed. Um, but in the manga, he's got this itty bitty ponytail jutting out behind his head. So he's just starting to grow his hair out. And it's yeah. really cute. <laughs> I want to see more and more like halfway Ed's, like halfway yeah. between where he started and where he is now. Adorable. Yeah, well, maybe you will in the manga. Probably, honestly, there's so much more. Mm-hmm. You just couldn't fit it all into the show. <laughs> all right. Now, the last thing that we wanted to just dis- to briefly discuss is why why these specific intros and outro w- were chosen. Um, so the intro song, I think they chose it because it's, the song is all about like dreaming of a future um that is brighter but also still remembering the past and that what you and what you learn from it and like how it makes us who we are and also that the past isn't is not all bad and i think it's the overall message is that they're just they're happy with the progress that they've made so far but they're looking towards the future and they want to keep moving forward yes um and then the outro song um it's okay to feel things and be vulnerable and also it's okay to accept help um i think the last few episodes especially like that's kind of been a theme where like yeah winry and other people are telling them like you need to you need to show your emotions you need a lot a lot has happened to you and it's okay to be sad about it um and also uh megan pointed out like the line that uh, Ross says, where she's like, "Not all adults are your enemy," but also that could fit with like, "Not all people are your enemy," and I think that 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 fits well with with this song and the theme. Yeah. Of the song. Yeah, and getting back into the imagery from from the songs and why that was probably chosen. Uh, well, of course, they want to show all the characters off and what's going to happen, you know, in the next season, but. For the intro, I thought it was cool that they showed, you know, black and white at first. It kind of is bleak. And then the world changes to one of color. But I thought maybe since it's, it goes to a perspective shot of Al, maybe black and white is how Al sees the world because he doesn't have all of his human senses. So he's kind of dulled mm-hmm. compared to like Ed, who sees everything in very vibrant colors. Cause the next shot is of Ed standing on a hill and the grass seems greener than normal. His red coat is really standing out. And that, you know, that kind of makes me sad a little bit. Yeah. But it was cool how they, they framed that. Um, and uh, the imagery of awesome fighting scenes just makes you so hyped for what's going to come next. Uh, there's also a lot of symbolism in the intro because there's Ed standing before his father. And there's also the brothers walking away on the railroad tracks. I think there's a lot of hidden meanings behind those that will become more evident as we get further in the story. And uh, then we move to the outro and the imagery is mostly peaceful scenes and the characters are kind of in repose, you know, they're just standing, letting the wind blow on their faces. Uh, And there's also the imagery of showing the characters when they are younger and Ed and Al especially, and maybe showing their innocence and how they wish to return to it perhaps. Yeah, which was, I don't know, kind of similar to the last outro. Yep, it's always about them as as kids and in 
what they went through and how they're doing now. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Are you winning, son? <laughs> <laughs> Where's that meme? We have that one somewhere, right? It's like Which the one? one where Hohenheim walks in on Ed and Al doing the transmutation and he goes, are you winning, son? And Ed's on the ground with blood everywhere. I don't know that I've seen that one. Oh, okay. I don't know where I saw it. It's probably Pinterest. (laughs) I'm sure it is. (laughs) All right. Well, that's all we have for this little bonus episode. Yeah. Um, Yeah. Talking about the new intro and outro. And I don't know. This is... I really like them. I like all I like all of them. So Yes. <laughs> I think it's just fun talking about the songs though, because there's just if you know the show, there's a lot to unpack. Mm-hmm. If you don't yeah. know the show, it just makes you go, Wow, I'm into this. So yeah. I I think that's um I don't know, I, I think it's a good idea to have these bonus episodes. Me too. Yeah, let let us know what you guys think of uh this bonus episode and if you want us to do more bonus episodes not just necessarily about the intro and outro but about other things yes and we will be out with another episode soon (laughs) yeah thanks for listening all right bye bye